25 years ago, the Joyce Foundation was thinking about starting a program on gun violence prevention, the first such program in the country. So I was working there, I read a lot, and I kept coming across articles by this guy, Stephen Terrett, that were really smart and perceptive. So I called him cold and asked if he would meet with me, and Steve, as you know, was unfailingly generous. We talked and talked and talked, and I was just so impressed with his brilliance, his commitment to reducing gun violence in America, his passion for the issue, and his creativity. So I said, think big, forget that we had guidelines, forget about the amount. What is it you would like to do to reduce gun deaths in America? And he was a little startled, but he thought about it. And then he said, I'd like to start a center here at Hopkins on gun policy and research. Now, for the Joyce Foundation, that was fantastic. Um, it aligned perfectly with our priority of refocusing gun violence as a public health rather than just a criminal justice issue. Um, and obviously, to have a center at one of the leading schools of public health in the country would be wonderful. Um, Steve brought on an amazing staff, Daniel Webster, Jan Vernick, and others, and uh, had a terrific group of colleagues, Garen Wintermute, uh, Steve Hargarten, who he mentored and partnered with. And 25 years later, we have the leading center on policy and research to reduce gun violence in the country, a place you can rely on for data, for great ideas, for creativity and reliability. It's really a remarkable achievement. You know, Hopkins' leadership on this issue goes back even further, back to 1980 when Sue Baker and Steve Terrett and Park Dietz published Firearms and the Public Health in the Journal of Public Health Policy. The Gun Center was built on the firm foundation laid by such early work, ironically taking its place just as an NRA-led effort in Congress largely choked off federal support for research on firearm violence in the mid-1990s. So who cuts off support for research in the middle of an epidemic? Those were lean times. Many people left the field, but not the crew there at Hopkins. And now you are leading a nationwide resurgence. You're doing some of the best and most impactful research in the country, teaching others how to do it and how to use it, working to translate research into effective policies and programs. An early alum of the Hopkins effort, having been a master's student there in 1982-83, it's a real pleasure to acknowledge that our programs here in California are very much part of the legacy of the ongoing effort there at Hopkins. It is an honor and a pleasure to be your colleague, your friend, and on occasion, your foxhole buddy. I'm a public health lawyer, and one thing that has always been really a unique contribution of our gun center is its early recognition of the importance of law and policy in furthering gun violence prevention. And that focus on law and policy has allowed me to do things that I'm really proud of in my career, including focusing, of course, on the evaluation of gun laws in collaboration with people like Daniel Webster and Cass Crafasi, working on uh, evaluations, including uh, an evaluation of Maryland's Saturday night special ban, and of course of gun licensing laws, which our center has become known for. But our focus on law has also included things like um, helping states and the federal government and localities to, uh, to design and implement the most effective gun violence prevention policies. My career began as a doctoral student at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Because of my interest in domestic violence and homicide prevention, I was assigned Daniel Webster as my faculty mentor. And I was put to work on projects for the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Policy and Research 
pretty immediately. And this was back in 2002, where there were very few places around the country where a doctoral student could be specifically trained in gun policy research. I am very fortunate to have had that experience. It has informed everything I have done in my career. After graduation, I continued and still continue to collaborate with center faculty, specifically Daniel Webster and Shannon Frateroli. And we have produced rigorous, high quality research on domestic violence related firearm laws. This research has informed policy and been impactful. And having an impact through your research is what we all hope for. And the Center for Gun Policy and Research consistently puts out that high quality, rigorous, impactful research. One of my most memorable projects with the Center was a mixed methods and multi-pronged analysis of gun law enforcement in Baltimore that included engaging with community residents to hear firsthand about their interactions with law enforcement and learn from their lived experiences to provide recommendations to the city to Im improve violence reduction efforts. That project, along with several others where we worked alongside local practitioners and leaders, impressed upon me the utmost importance of listening to and grounding scientific research in the needs and concerns of those most impacted by violence. My hope for the center's future is that it continues to center equity and racial justice in all of its endeavors, and that it provides even greater accessibility of the impactful and translational research done there to communities, policymakers, and leaders nationwide devoted to gun violence prevention.